Let's go into this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Which offers the best performance? Which offers the best opportunities? Which I like his videos, by the way. Codap's Academy, I like his videos. Into all that and more. First, let me explain how we'll be approaching this. First, we'll look at the differences in philosophy and mindset between each language. Okay. Second, we'll explore the features of both languages and their relative strengths and weaknesses. Third, we'll examine what the statistics say about the difference between the two languages in terms of developer experience, attractiveness, attractiveness and, and salary. salary. Very good point. And then I'll tell you what I recommend. But whatever right. language you choose, I've provided links in the description to helpful resources for learning them. Let's dive in. I like what it. are the differences in Those philosophy are solid between points. the two languages? We have our contenders. In the blue corner goes Friendly Gopher. In the, well, brownish red corner, Rust's unofficial mascot, Ferris the Crab. And there you oh, have it Oh, dude, already. The, you're going to get sued. The Rust Foundation is going to go after you. you. I hope you are linking this to the Rust Foundation codabs because they're going to sue you now. Logos, names, mascots, and even colors tell us a lot about the differences between the two languages. Right. Let's start with Go. Go's name and logo express speed and efficiency. Right. The three Classic. lines make the text look like two wheels in rapid motion. Go's mission, as expressed by their brand book, is to bring all order to the complexity of creating and running software at scale. A good way to say this, bring order is just how can we make this fast? How can we get people to write complicated code that does complicated things easier, right? Rob Pike has said that when at Google, all the new generation of programmers did not have a low level understanding of C or C++, which made it difficult to write efficient software at Google. So what Rob Pike and the Golang team did was they created a language, AKA Golang, which basically gave people without the most in-depth experience of programming a way to build complex things with Go. One of his most popular talks at AUCon 2023, he basically said that the point of Go wasn't to create a new language, but it, it was to give way for developers to write software easier. That was the purpose of Golang. If you guys like Go and this kind of content, make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy. But let's get back to the video. Let's unpack that. Creating and running at scale. What does that mean? Go's goal is to be simple enough to be used for prototyping and efficient enough to be the language of the cloud. Go's brand book also says it wants to be thoughtful, simple, efficient, reliable, productive, and friendly. I think it's These all values those things. are expressed in the friendly, cuddly mascot, the gopher. Rust mascot, Ferris, certainly has a friendly smile, but it's prickly though, as is Rust's logo. Rust's goal yeah. is not to be friendly or simple. After all, crabs walk sideways. But what does that mean? Wait, I don't get that. Rust's goal is to not to be friendly or simple. After all, crabs walk sideways. What does walking sideways have anything to do with this? Perhaps the best way to explain okay. Rust's values is to tell its origin story. Graydon Hoare was a programmer at Mozilla. Coming home one night, he found an out of service elevator. It means you never move forward, just like using Rust to make code. <laughs> he lived on the 21st floor. The software had crashed due to a memory error. This goaded Hoare into creating a language that prevents memory management crashes. Okay. Rust is designed to be solid, like the crap. And the name Rust also conveys this. It doesn't refer- Imagine being such a Chad that you're like, huh, I have a problem at work. Instead of fixing and addressing that problem and using the existing code to fix it, I'm just gonna create a brand new language. To the oxidation of iron, but to an exceedingly resilient fungi. Now, what are the differences and common strengths between the features of Go and Rust? Go and Rust both focus on memory management, on concurrency and performance. Yeah. However, their approach is very it's extremely different. different. This too reflects management, their philosophy. Allow me to demonstrate. First, let's talk about memory management. Go has a helpful garbage collector helpful. that tries to clean up unused memory references for you. The garbage collector is like the quintessential feature of Go. It's like one of the main reasons why it's so fast. The garbage collector is like amazing. Rust, on the other hand, enforces the concept of ownership and borrowing yep. to prevent you from coding memory bugs. Go helps you. Rust forces you to do yep. the right thing. Basically, Go just takes care of it for you. Rust makes you do it for yourself, right? Second, concurrency and multi-threading. In a similar fashion, Go provides easy to use Go routines. These are lightweight threads that allow you to write concurrent code without worrying about thread management. Mm -hmm. Rust, on the other hand, uses basically system threads. Here, Rust's ownership concept helps prevent thread locking errors and data races. Again, I mean, you can do the same thing with Go. You can still like handle Go threading with Go. I wouldn't say like there's ways to handle the threading in Go as well with the Go routines and uh, you know, all the feature it gives. Go makes your life easier. Rust teaches you to do the right thing. 
I disagree with that take. Go, like, you can't just slap a Go concurrency thread and be like, oh, do it for me. Go concurrency functions are light red, are, are lightweight, are easy to use, but they don't do all the work for you. Do you have to still allocate that? You can still, like, block your, uh, your communication. You can do a bunch of stuff if you're not careful with it. It is so. you to do the right thing. Third, performance. Go has a small memory footprint and is optimized for modern multi-core processors. Its syntax is simple and concise. This makes it easy to learn and to start working with. Right. Go does the right thing for you by default. Rust, on the other hand, provides something called zero-cost abstractions. Basically, there is no magic. The code that you write faithfully reflects the code that the compiler produces mm -hmm. and vice versa. Kind this like means less runtime overhead, which helps you build high performance applications. That's not necessarily true at all. Like this concept depends on a developer way more. You can still write garbage Rust code that is not going to be more performant. High performance is not guaranteed in Rust. If you don't know how to do how to write high performant code, you're going to write garbage Rust code. There's no guarantee that all because you have a low level granularity control of your Rust code that's going to be better performant than Go. In short, Go hides the complexity for you. Rust helps you understand it by exposing okay. it. Now, I agree to that. What do developers think of the languages? Let's look at the... I definitely agree with that take that Go does hide a lot of the complications for you uh, while Rust exposes it to you and forces you to learn them. Sorry, my dog's barking again. Dog, what's the bark counter at? The statistics right, provided good. by the Stack Overflow developer survey. Go and 74. Rust have similar popularity levels at about 13% overall among developers. Developers' opinions. So 13.24% for Go, 13.5%, 0.5% for Rust. The languages, however, show a difference. 84% of the developers who used Rust last year want to use it again yep. this year. For Go, that number is lower at 60%. The survey also shows that 30% of those who didn't work with Rust last want year to use Rust. want to work with it this year. That number is 20% for Go. In short, Rust is globally more desirable among developers than Go. But what about on the job market? While if we look at the reported salaries, developers working in both languages report a mean yearly salary of about $90,000. There's Go. Go. Okay, so Go is $92,000. Developers are slightly above, and Rust developers are slightly below. A uh, word of caution here. These values are reported globally. The situation in your local job market will vary. Yep. Now, yep. after having explored the philosophies, the features, and the statistics of Go and Rust, what are my recommendations? Okay, so a few things before going to recommendation. First of all, it seems like he's going to push Rust. I think he's going to say something that around the lines of like, if you're interested in just building something quick and fast and not interested in learning lower level concepts, use Go. If you are a desirable person who wants to learn how programming works, use Rust. Here's the thing that I, I think he lacked uh, in his last kind of analysis there. One, the desired trait versus the undesired trait. Like, I think there's a lot more people who use Go last year than people who use Rust. And also, I think what will really help this case, not just look at the salary, but look at how many jobs are open for those programming languages. Like how many jobs exist for Golang specific developers? How many jobs exist for Rust specific uh, developers? So if we go to like indeed.com, I think I've done this before. How many Golang jobs are available? All right, so Go developer, we have 3,609 jobs. Continue on with Rust. 567 jobs for Rust developers. So if we go to like indeed.com real quick, right? And we put in like Rust developer, all right? Sure, in the San Francisco Bay Area, let's just say that. There's 44 jobs, okay. So there's 44 jobs for Rust developer and let's put Go developer. Uh, let's see if there's more or less. Uh, there's 231 jobs, so Go is way better, okay. So 44 for Rust developers versus the 230 for Golang developer, which is like almost like a 5X markup, which I think should play a factor into deciding or at least putting into the analysis of what language is better if you're doing a Go versus Rust comparison. Well, let's recap. Go is designed to be simple and friendly. Rust is designed to be as hard as possible to break. There are two teachers. One is encouraging and warm, a kindergarten teacher. The other is demanding and harsh, a drill sergeant. One makes life easier for you. The other makes you work harder for your own good. Go and Rust mm -hmm. also have different primary use cases. Go is meant for the cloud, for server applications. Rust is meant for low-level or high-performance or embedded applications. Which is the best for you? Well, that will depend on two things. Who you are and what you're trying to build. Right, Go is easier to pick up. Rust requires more effort but provides greater rewards in the long run. What kind of teacher do you need? Do you need encouragement? Are you building for the cloud? Well, I recommend Go. Do you need a demanding teacher who will push you forwards? Do you want to build performance-intensive or low-level embedded software? 
I recommend Rust. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whatever language you choose, if you're looking to pick up the basics, I recommend you go to Exorcism, which gives you simple tenders to help you learn. And if you're looking for projects to help you dive deep while learning how reference technologies like Git, Docker, or HTTP servers work, I recommend Code Crafters. I've provided links for both. Interesting, interesting video. I want to add on to his point of, you know, the drill sergeant analogy, right? When it comes to Go versus uh, Rust. And I think you should put more emphasis on that. So let's say you have Golang, right? And let's say you have something like Rust, okay? I agree with the analogy that Rust is much harder to learn, much harder to pick up. But I think one thing that I like about Golang is like going from zero to a hundred is super, super rewarding. It makes coding fun and it's not like too much handholding. The one thing I did kind of get from that video, it seemed a little biased for like, go hold your hand for everything, which is not necessarily true. Like Golang does do a lot of things that Rust kind of abstracts. I mean, the Rust forces you to do, but I still think Go doesn't hold your hand all that much, right? You will still learn. You will still learn 100%. Now, the th- thing with Rust is that going going from zero to 60 is all right, but the 60 to 100 takes a long time. Uh, do, you re- do you recommend any Go course for beginner? I recommend Go resources, not courses. You don't need a course for Go. I would recommend like a textbook, Go by example, and other things like that. So the 0 to 60 takes a long time. And I think due to this, like it can be daunting and for people to drop, for people to drop Rust because it's too hard. And then one more thing is like the job market as well, right? Like the job market for Go versus Python would have been very helpful to have with the Indeed reference there. Thank you.